Yo, what's going on? It's your boy Phil Shocker, the nice to tech talk here with our week three team builder going in our GBL, going against Phantom. I believe Phantom is one and one, while well, we are also one and one. So this game is semi important for both of us because one of us may have one more step closer to making playoffs, but one more will have the chance to have to keep grinding back up for the spot. Uh, looking at this matchup, this matchup really kind of goes either way, in my opinion. This thing could really go from up, down, left, right, north, east, south, west, anything you want to think about. But let's go ahead and break down his team. First off, you guys can hit that like button down below if you haven't already. Subscribe to join the Phil Shocker crew today because you'd be for real and we have the king of the crew. So let's go ahead and break down Phantom's team. Phantom team is Sinner of Cinderich, which I believe, yes, is Limburo. So Limburo is allowed. Actually, wait, 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 I think Limbero's allowed. I think it's allowed. I could be wrong. I'll double check that, though. He's got a Dublay, Gastrodon, a Selgor, Gigantamax, Hatterene as his G-Max mod. Um, Mandibuzz, Como O, Raichu, Rhydon, and Rose Raid. Look at this matchup. This is a tough build because... There's roughly guaranteed at least four mods that are coming. Cinderance, I definitely comes because it outspeeds every single thing on my team. Uh, a choice scarf Cinderance set could be potential, but that would definitely limit then Cinderance is useful in this matchup. So there could be the chance he could run true scarf to make sure he's still max speed to outspeed a lot of things on my team. So there could be that. Dual thing comes because of its dual type advantage that it has in this matchup. Just, just so much against my team. Gastrodon comes because of the fact I do not have a grass type mon. He may know that some of my mons do get grass moves, but grass typing itself is just really something just, that he can use. Um, I think a Selgor comes because of the fact that I only have one hazard remover. And he can just literally spack, stacks, toxic spikes, and spikes all over me. But if anything, he just probably brings normal spikes. I don't think toxic spikes makes too much sense because um, Solazzo could potentially be able to always beat Hatterene 1v1 if I get a nasty plot up. So there's something like that. But spikes work better for my team because I am more around weakness. So spikes really chip down my team a whole lot. So it's going to really come down to how we play this matchup in that sense of the regard. Uh, I think he brings his G-Max out of ring because G-Max out of ring kind of just has a field day versus my team. The only things I have on my team that can kind of somewhat counter it is just Corviknight. And I think Salazzle, but Salazzle loses to it as well, but mainly Corviknight. I could not lose Corviknight. If I lose Corviknight, I will lose this match. So it's going to be able to do that. Mandibuzz, I think, comes from the fact that it's his, only, it's his only way of removing hazards as well. I think he has to bring because Webs will be... Semi good versus his team, but also would triple his team really badly as well. So something he does, and also he needs to keep rocks off his side of the field as well because his team is with the rocks. Como O, I will say this: Como O and Raichu can be with potential mix. If anything, it's only Como O and maybe replace it with Cell Gore because of the fact that he just has something that can really crush my team if he's got the right set of it. But that's his team. Really scared matchup. I definitely think Rose Raid and Raichu right make sense. Raichu does make some sense as well, but I don't know if he really would bring it. But let's go ahead and break down the team. That we have for you guys today. Of course, we can't have a team without having the G Max himself, Grim Snarl. Grim Snarl has a really strong matchup in this game. He kind of just beats about everything on his team. It's a scary situation between um Dewblade in such regard. But other than that, I can beat Dewblade one v one if I get a bulk all above. And that's what the whole theme of this team is. It, most of this team is set up or defensive. There's a lot of ways behind it, so let's go into this. First is our G-Max Ganon, our Grim Snarl. We're running Play Rope, Bulk Up, Darkest Lariat, and you see Shadow's Claw, which I'll get in a second. 176 HP, 172 Attack with Adam and Nature, 4 Defense, and 156 Spadef. Now you may be asking yourself, Thriller, why are you Spadef heavy when his team is more physical? Because the chance is this. If he's got Acid Spray, Throat Spray... A Selgor, that could be a problem. And I want to be make sure I can potentially take one hit. Because he could be modest. But if he's modest, I always take one hit. I revenge him down and knock him out unless he has Focus Sash. That's in regard. But basically, I made a hit hard. If I get a plus one up, I'm hitting things hard. The goal is to either get a plus one or plus two up and then start clicking the GMAX button and just clicking three buttons. That's all I'm going to do. Now, I do have Shadow Call and I want to go over the reason why I have Shadow Call. Shadow Call hits Hatterene super effectively. Other than that, I literally just need to spam my Play Rope or Darkest Lariat versus this team, and I win. 
Shadow Ball is specifically made to beat Hatterene 1v1 every time it comes in against me. The goal is to get my bulk ups going up and then hit it hard with Shadow Ball. If I do that, then I have a made good chance to either cripple it down or potentially have a chance to win this game. So that's going to come with that. Up next, we have Salamandra, our Gudra this week. And Gudra has a phenomenal matchup this game. The only thing that really kind of pressures us a bit is the physically offensive Como O and Hatterene itself. But we're in 116 HP, 156 deep physical defense, 96 spadef, and 140 in special attack with a modest nature. With that assault vest, because Gudra knows how to run it so good. We are actually running Gooey this week, and Gooey's a little interesting. Maybe ask yourself, why Gooey? Well, Gooey is really good for the sense of the matter that if Cinerance is in, it's a really good to slow Cinerance down for my team in case it is Scarf. Um, it's also really good to use against things like Como O, and potentially if I do die or lose anything, I weaken it down to where I can come in with something else and revenge it. So there's that's what's regard. But we're in Power Up for that bloody Gastron and Rhydon, which always one shot unless Rhydon with how it's defensive. Actually, ooh. Just remember we have that. I'll, I'll do a good comic and see what I need to do with power up, but I gotta remember, just remember we're running modest when we have power up. Dragon Pulse Fire Blast, which really just dents the steam in Acid Spray. Acid Spray is for that Hatterene to where if I know I have to click Acid Spray again to kill it, or if I have to click Fire Blast to kill it, then I do that. So, again, it's really designed to weaken down the Hatterene so I can win it. Because he's never going to G-Max right on Gudra. He always will probably have a chance to set up and then he G-Maxes. That's what I would personally do with myself. So, again, I will double-check that to make sure Power-Up is still a one-shot on a... Looks like maybe physically defensive uh, Gastron. I'm going to bring Chicago, a.k.a. my homeboy Zach, in his Corviknight. With Corviknight here with Rocky Helmet, with Iron Defense, Ruse, Power Trip, and Iron Head. And this is a very unique set in the fact that this actually will touch, will touch, um, Dewblade. Because Iron Defense, with Power Trip, I get a, it's got its base 20, and then 20 for each stat. So with 6 Iron Defenses, that's plus, what, 20, so it's 20, 40, and 60, plus that is 80 base power. Which means I should be always able, depending on the investment, always two shot a do blade. And then Roos with Dawn Divinity. Rocky Helmet's really good for things like Cinderint and Como O and Ride On to a sense of regard. And that's what's really good about this. I was thinking leftovers, but in the long run, I think having Rocky Helmet is better. I might switch it to leftovers before the match. We'll have to decide though. Running max HP, 100 in attack, 16 spadef in defense, and 140 in spadef. To be a little more spadef bulky to be able to handle things like the Hatterene. And that's where Mirror Arm is also coming in clutch. Because if he tries to go Mystical Fire before anything, try to get a special attack, I can lower his special attack in that sense of regard before he damn, damn, G maxes. We're bringing Tundra this week, as Tundra has a phenomenal matchup. We're bringing Adamant Scarf Mammo, baby. Earthquake, Ice Crash, Ice Shard. Ice Shard is there in case to all prioritize a Scarf of itself. Earthquake just hits up pretty much everything on his team. Ice Crash also hits up pretty much everything on his team. Stealth Rock is very interesting because it invites something in. I can then freely switch out into something that can comfortably take the thing on. And then beat that and go for that. But if I can get my rocks up and keep my rocks up, his team's crippled. But the, the speed threat we outspeed Cinderace by one point. But we do not speed anything else that is a scarf on his team. I was thinking going jolly for this one, but Adamant was enough, and Thick Hat was always going to help me regardless in this matchup. So this is going to be a little risky, but I think Mamo can really push out Clutch. This is another game changer Mon here. I think he potentially wins the game, even though it does have a very terrible matchup. We're running Iron Defense, Calm Mind, Bug Buzz, Psychic, Big Brain here with the left door. Max HP, 76 defense, 52 in defense, and 128 with a modest nature. We're running zero speed because it doesn't make any sense. But we're running Bug Buzz with Calm Mind, I mean, Bug Buzz with Psychic because he has no resist. The only thing we're going to have to really find a way to beat down is going to have to be that Dewblade. If I can either weaken or get rid of Dewblade, this Mon comes in and just clicks his buttons and then starts winning. I really want recover on this set, but there was no point in time I was ever going to get recover on here because then I can't beat anything without Bug Buzz, and I need Bug Buzz plus Psychic to really win. And last but not least, we bring the debut, finally, of Jello, the Jello senior with a cast of Barrier, Will with Skull, Strength Energy Ball, and Strength Sap, nearly max HP, 208 in defense of the Bold Nature, 8 in the defense, 8 in special attack, and 56 but death. Basically, this is to be able to 1v1 the Dewblade and cripple Dewblade. If Dewblade gets crippled, his team is in major jeopardy. But that is going to be the team, guys. I think we can pull up a win here. It's just going to be really how I play. But with all being said, I've been Phil Shocker, the nicest hedgehog. Thank you guys so much for watching. Until next time, peace out, guys.